Good afternoon. We are on Tuesday the 6th of September 2022. I'm going to be sharing with you the Mass readings. I've already listened to two Masses today. I was so tired yesterday. I, I only recorded the Mass readings. I was just too tired from walking on Sunday. I'm just not used to it. I wasn't I know, had no energy yesterday, so I'm going to try to do some, but we might get interference. The gardeners are in the other gardens, and they'll probably come round here, and maybe the noise of the mowers, I'll have to stop recording. So I'll try and do some before they reach this part of the gardens. Um, we're on Tuesday of 23rd week, Ordinary Time, Year 2. Tuesday 6th of September the first reading will be from the letter, first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians chapter 6 verses 1 to 11 and I heard a better version of this reading this morning from Glenstall Abbey it was beautiful whether it was longer or not I'm not sure but the words were definitely not this Bible the theme there are differences between brothers in front of unbelievers. That's not a good theme, is it? And um, the psalm will be Psalm 149. The response will be, The Lord takes delight in his people. And the gospel reading will be according to Luke chapter 6. Verses 12 to 19. So before I begin, I'll just say a couple of prayers. The readings are very short today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I can hear the ducks out there. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom his love commits me here, ever this day, be at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. Holy Michael Archangel, defend me in this day of battle. Be my safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, I humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan and all the wicked evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. The first reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. How dare one of your members take up a complaint against another in the law courts of the unjust instead of before the saints. As you know, it is the saints who are to judge the world. And if the world is to be judged by you, how can you be unfit to judge trifling cases, since we are also to judge angels? It follows that we can judge matters of everyday life. But when you have had cases of that kind, the people you appointed to try them were not even respected in the church. You should be ashamed. Is there really not one reliable man among you to settle differences between brothers? And so one brother brings a court case against another in front of unbelievers? It is bad enough for you to have lawsuits at all against one another. Oughtn't you to let yourselves be wronged and let yourselves be cheated? But you are doing the wronging and the cheating and to your own brothers. You know perfectly well that people who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God. People of immoral lives, idolaters, adulterers, catamites, sodomites, thieves, usurers, 
drunkards, slanderers, and swindlers will never inherit the kingdom of God. These are the sort of people some of you were once, but now you have been washed clean and sanctified and justified through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and through the Spirit of our God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 149 and the response is The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing a new song to the Lord, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in its maker. Let Zion's sons exult in their king. Response. The Lord takes delight in his people. Alleluia. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the poor with salvation. Response. The Lord takes delight in his people. Alleluia. Let the faithful rejoice in their glory. Shout for joy and take their rest. Let the praise of God be on their lips. This honour is for all his faithful. Response. The Lord takes delight in his people. Alleluia. 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 A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The theme, Jesus spent the whole night in prayer to God and picked out twelve whom he called them apostles. Jesus went out into the hills to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. When day came, he summoned his disciples and picked out twelve of them. He called them apostles. Simon, whom he called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. He then came down with them and stopped at a piece of level ground where there was a large gathering of his disciples with a great crowd of people from all parts of Judea and from Jerusalem and from the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon who had come to hear him and to be cured of their diseases. People tormented by unclean spirits were also cured and everyone in the crowd was trying to touch him because power came out of him that cured them all. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So the reflection this Tuesday on the Gospel of Luke 6, 12 to 19 is um, the 23rd week in ordinary time. Well, hopefully this is just a reflection and you will hear the mower. I can hear it coming. But... Uh, I, I don't want to cut out a little. We'll do a small um, reflection. Jesus' disciples once asked him to teach them to pray. It was because they had often seen him pray. They sensed that there was a special quality to his prayer and they wanted to pray as he prayed. In response to their request on that occasion, Jesus taught his disciples the prayer that has come to be known as the Lord's Prayer, or 
the Our Father. Jesus practice of prayer, which so impressed the disciples, is in evidence at the beginning of today's gospel. The gospel reading according to Luke, that is, Jesus went out into the hills to pray. And he spent the whole night in prayer to God. Imagine that. No rest. Well, I've done it in the past. But uh, when you get to this age, you need some rest. As I found out yesterday. Very few of us could manage to pray the whole night long. When you do a night vigil, you actually do take a break out of being in the church and go in a ante room and have a cup of tea and coffee and a biscuit to stay awake. Um, there must have been something exceptional about Jesus' prayer. That is because there was something exceptional about his relationship with God. He was God's unique son. Yet St. Paul reminds us in one of his letters that God has poured the Holy Spirit into our hearts so as to draw us into sharing in Jesus' own relationship with God. So if you've got the youth and energy, join a prayer vigil at night. It's a wonderful experience, but not at my age. It's not. Although some, some monks and some nuns still pray at my age in the nights, I pray in bed. <laughs> I wake up. Uh, it is the Holy Spirit in our lives who moves us to prayer. Well, he's moved me a lot. <laughs> our prayer is not so much our activity as the activity of the Holy Spirit within us. In that sense, our prayer consists in surrendering to the activity of the Holy Spirit deep in our hearts, entering into prayer of the Holy Spirit within us. Jesus' prayer flowed into his life. So in today's Gospel reading, it inspires his choice of the twelve from among the larger group of his disciples. His prayer also moves him to come down from the mountain and minister to those who needed his presence. Our prayer too will shape our lives and others, those who we pray for, even though we're not always aware of it. I'm certainly not aware, I just pray, but I, I never um, worry, I just pray in faith. So our communion with the Lord in prayer creates a space for him to be in communion with others through us. So I have one or two more words to say about prayer. When you're having a tough time in life, don't decrease your prayer life. You increase it. You treble it. I've done that from my whole experience of my time in Jamaica when things were the roughest I've ever experienced in my life and um, yet wonderful at the same time because it I feel now that it was a privilege to know what how poor people live and how and what and what kept you going the Lord himself because if you look at the people of faith a lot of them are very poor and their pay, faith is amazing so I recommend if you're poor if you're unemployed you're sick any of those situations pray 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 more increase your faith increase your prayer life uh, you will be joyful in poverty more than some rich people in, in, in whatever they have because as the praises go up, you forget where you are, you forget what you haven't got, you forget you've got a hungry belly, you forget you've got no washing powder, you forget you haven't got any toilet tissue, you forget, you, you, you just, you're just praising God and singing and encouraging one another and singing on and you know, the light, the brightness comes, it's wonderful. And then you forget your poverty. You really do forget your poverty. And then something wonderful happens. Someone will visit you or something will crop up. Someone will need some work and you're, 
husband can go and do something on the land with someone or his own land or his father's bit. Uh, all sorts of things happen when you praise God. So in your poverty, it might sound silly to you, but in your poverty, that's when you pray more. And then you see wonderful things happen to you. If you're unemployed, you have your unemployment money. We never had any of that. They don't have that sort of thing um, where we where we lived in that country. But if you're in a, a Western or organized country, uh, you will be receiving some little benefit. Basically, it'll only cover your rent probably and a little more. But don't worry. Trust in God and pray and pray and pray. That's all I can say. If you're in a difficult situation, pray more. I know it sounds silly, but do that and you'll be happy, you'll be joyful, and you'll have nothing still. But God changes that because you're focusing on God. You just focus totally on God, not yourself, not even your husband, not anything. You focus on the Lord. And if you do it together, you get double blessings because if both of you, your husband, or if you're on your own, then there is no one. But uh, I was blessed with a husband that praised and sang to God and, you know, joined me. We, we did things together like that. So, yeah, if you're on your own, don't let depression hit you because you haven't got work or you haven't got anything or you're worried about paying your bill. That bill's not sitting in front of you now. Right now, praise God. Sing. Wait until it is in front of you and then come to an agreement with the the person who's pr providing the service and, 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 and you share out what you have between each one. You don't give all your money to one person if you've only got so much. You say, I can pay this off the bill, can pay this. So you give them all a bit off each bill and tell them well, when you have the rest of the money, you'll pay, pay it in full. But if, if you've only got, well, you can't select one of the, because it takes time to take you to court, remember that. And most of them don't want to because, especially if it's electricity bill, they'll have so many that they couldn't afford to take all of their customers to court. Make them an offer. That's what you do. And the gardeners are here, so I think I'd better stop. So thank you so much for listening. May God bless you. I'm sending you his peace in abundance. May you always be happy and joyful in the Lord. So I better take a break from recording till they've finished their, all their work because it is a bit noisy. God bless. Thank you.